Hello and welcome to Midlife Isn't a Crisis with me, Christy Adams. I'm going to be bringing you motivation, information and we're going to have conversations about challenging age stereotypes and positivity and optimism. So whether you're looking forward to a gap year or a new career or chilling or getting over your empty nest, whatever you choose to be doing, this place is for you if you're an optimistic, positive thinker. So enjoy the show and I'll catch you again at the end. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Christy here on Tuesday the 6th of April, podcast episode 34 and we're in 2021. And this episode is about making space for new things, which means clearing out some of the old things. And the subtitle I've given this is that there's a myth around minimalism. And it's I'm not going to be on about scarcity. It's definitely about abundance. So I will come on to that after my intro. So outdoor space is getting important in the UK where I'm based lockdown is coming to an end now hopefully we're over the worst of it we can just keep our fingers crossed on that one and outdoor space is becoming much more important as spring opens up as well but also because we're told we can't often go abroad this year so a lot of people are going to be looking at where they spend their holidays where they spend their time how they manage to maintain the mental well-being and physical health outside and already the garden centres and the garden shops have sold out of furniture. So I think this year is going to be very strange, but hopefully we'll start to realise what's important. And that's what this episode is about. What I've been up to, I've been editing again, obviously. Um, a rewrite and an edit on a novel can take a long time. It's almost like rewriting it five times over. And I'm almost through the first sort of rewrite of one of my first novels and the second one has gone off to an editor I'm not sure how that's going to work because of budgets and things like that because editing isn't cheap so I'll keep you updated on that but remember that if you're starting your writing journey there's no shame in having a really rubbish first draft don't worry about it the first draft is just to get all the bones and all the st- the plot and things like that down on paper So that's what your first draft is all about. So don't worry that when you finish your book, you think, oh, that's rubbish, because that's what happens. And then you you start tidying it up, basically. And it'll never be perfect. Perfect is the enemy of done. So don't worry about it. And if somebody criticises it, it's just not for them. And also I'm doing Camp Nano, NaNoWriMo this month, which is National Novel Writing Month. The full one is in November, but camp is in April and I'm writing a non-fiction book to go alongside this podcast and my Facebook community and my website. And one of the topics in it is what I'm going to cover today. So keep an eye out for that book. And if you're interested, nip over to my website and sign up for my newsletter because that's where you'll find out about it. And I'll obviously tell you in this podcast at some point. So back to the topic, making space for new things and clearing out the old. I'll start with a quote, which is a quote I try to live by, but I'm torn because I love brutalist architecture and very minimal surroundings. But I also like the chaos of an English cottage garden and patchworks and busyness. So I sort of veer between the two really and I I tend to rebel I tend to get clutter and then rebel and get rid of it all and the quote that I like to refer back to is William Morris have nothing in your house that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful so if it's not useful to you and it's not beautiful what have you got it for that's the question my book has a section on decluttering and don't worry I'm not going to give you Marie Kondo and tell you to get rid of all your books because that to me is sacrilege but the whole point of decluttering is to make space for the things that you do love and referring back to that William Morris quote it's making space for the things that are useful and that are beautiful and I don't know if you've ever watched these tv shows where they go into hoarders houses and clear out 
and they have beautiful things but they're all hidden behind all the clutter or in drawers and put away in cupboards and the whole point of decluttering is not just physically but mentally is to get the things that matter out in the open so that you can see those beautiful things and I made a promise to myself years ago now that I wouldn't put things away to keep for best I was gifted some beautiful really expensive crystal glasses and they were in a cupboard all the time and I used to use cheap glasses to drink from and then I thought this is ridiculous it was because I was brought up in an era where grandparents had a china chest and a dining room and you never went in it. It was the front room was only for Sundays and you never got the best china out apart from on Christmas Day. So it just seemed a waste to me. And I decided that if one got broken, then it got broken. And I did break one of the glasses when I was using it and I was upset for about five minutes and then I was fine because I'd got enjoyment out of that item I'd used it and there is nothing better than drinking a drink out of a lovely glass I know it sounds really petty and really small-minded but it, it just adds to the pleasure of that five minutes drinking either a glass, I don't drink anymore but it used to be a glass of wine or just sitting down and having a glass of something out of a really nice glass. It just makes the difference. You'll know yourself, you know, drinking out of a paper cup or a mug or whatever. You know, you'll have your favourites. And that was that's what it's all about. That Get rid of all the rubbish and all the rubbish that's lying about and all the clutter. And enjoy it. Enjoy your nice things that you've got, that you love, that you've bought for a reason or you've been gifted for a reason. In my course and my book, I cover five different areas of decluttering. The physical, environmental, digital, emotional and social. And I go into all those areas both in my coaching and in my book and online. And I'm just going to give you five quick tips in this podcast so I'm not going to lecture you all about it, which I never lecture anybody anyway. So five quick tips that you can take away from this. Today or this week. Today, don't procrastinate. Take one thing and sell it or donate it or gift it. Just one thing. Something that isn't useful and isn't beautiful. It may be valuable, so obviously that would be where you can sell it. But take one thing and let it go and then you've started on your journey the second tip stop buying things we have got a lot better at being less materialistic since the lockdown and since covid and the fact that the shops have been closed but an awful lot of people have just moved their shopping habits online which in some ways is more dangerous because it used to be the joke was that you'd go on the shopping channel at two in the morning when you came back from having a beer at the pub but now you're online 24 7 and so is online shopping and you probably don't even have to log in it's probably on an app on your phone so easy try to have a week without buying anything and see how you get on. Third tip, create a Pinterest board for vis visual inspiration. It's easy to get a little bit fed up or a bit stuck or, I mean, I love art, so I love looking at art and I find it refreshes me and energises me. And Pinterest is a visual scrapbook. It's like Instagram, it's very visual. But Pinterest, you can create your own board. So you can create one... I've got various ones and you can go on mine. I'll put the link in the show notes to my Pinterest. And I've got one for the Facebook group. I've got ones that are secret for each one of my books that I'm writing. But also I have visuals that I enjoy. And what you could do is create maybe a minimalist board and collect images that inspire you. And things, it might be like an interior of a bedroom that you like. It might be a garden that you like. It might be, a, you know, a holiday trip that you like. But things that inspire you, that make you want to get rid of clutter and concentrate on what's important in life. Tip number four, tell friends and family that you don't want them to buy you physical gifts. 
get experiences. It might be they give you a voucher for a local restaurant or a local takeaway so that you can have a meal together or apart, depending on lockdown and how we go. It might be that they buy you experiences or make a donation to one of your chosen charities. But stop getting clutter given to you because that clutter is even more difficult to get rid of because you've got the emotional pressure of feeling guilty for getting rid of something somebody else has paid their hard-earned money for. It might be that you create an agreement with all your friends that you're just not going to buy each other gifts now that you're going to maybe make them something or make them a cake or whatever. But try to get your friends and your family to know that you don't want more stuff. And then the fifth quick tip, make some mental space as well. And just take five minutes today. I would like you to just at some point during your day, just take five minutes to just have nothing happening, to just sit, whether you call it meditation whether it's just sitting in a window looking out, whether you are able to get out into green space and you can just sit in the garden or just in your room with your eyes closed, whatever it may be, but try to spend five minutes. And it can be difficult for some people. Some people don't like being in their own head. And I totally appreciate that. But just give it a go. See if you can actually do it for five minutes. Okay, so they're my tips. Book recommendation is in line with this and it is also a podcast recommendation for the minimalists and I'm not telling you to be a minimalist or suggesting it but what I want you to remember is that minimalism isn't about having no stuff, it's about having the right stuff in your life, it's about abundance and focusing on what's important so coming back to the what's useful and what's beautiful that don't come at it from I'm getting rid of everything. Come at it from I'm making space for the things that I love, that I want, that I need in my life. It might be writing. It might be making time to write your book. You know that that's something I'm passionate about. It might be time to just do gardening or it could be making time or it could be making physical space that... You know, you want to be able to say you are doing a garden and you've got cut flowers and you want them to show off. If they're all hidden amongst clutter and everything, it's not going to work. Whereas if you've got a nice clean space with a small posy vase on it, it focuses your attention on that one thing. It's like in museums and galleries, isn't it? Where I wish we could go back to them as well. I miss them so much. But they have an open space with an item in it and it really focuses your attention in some galleries where you'll go in and there'll just be an empty room with one item in it and that item can be tiny but it really focuses your 100% attention on that item whereas if you go somewhere that's really busy you know these cathedrals and you know ancient buildings that are really really busy Sadly, you miss some of that quality because there's just so much. And it's that philosophy behind minimalism. So it's about abundance, not scarcity. So don't be frightened of it. And the minimalists have a podcast. I would strongly suggest that you subscribe to it. It might be too extreme for you. Um, But also the book I'm recommending is one of theirs. They have got numerous books, but it's called Essential. And it's the essays by the minimalists where they brought it together with just the essential items And the essential philosophy around minimalism and getting rid of things and clutter. So that's my book recommendation. And my example of letting go is that I've let go of my Patreon account, which I was building up. And I've decided to let that go. It was just one step too far. I didn't need it. And I feel really lighter, as daft as that sounds, for letting that go. So I'm trying to live by this. And it is difficult because I do love my books. And I have a lot of things and I'm a grandparent. So I've got things that my daughter's made me when she was at school. And I've got things that my grandchildren have given me. And it it has got emotional attachment. And I am slowly letting things go, but making sure that I focus on the right things. All right. So I hope that's helped. Let me know how you get on and I will see you again next week. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Hello again. Christy Adams here writer and coach and I just want to say thank you to everybody involved in this show especially you because this is why I'm bringing it to you to bring you value and to encourage you and motivate you 
because I know what it's like if there's so much pressure on, we're constantly being pushed over that hill and told that we're too old, and we're definitely not. If you'd like the links or the show notes, they're over on my website, which is christyadamswriter.com. So if you jump over there, you'll find some other free resources, my books, details of my coaching, because you can have one-to-one chats with me or join a coaching program with me. One thing that I would really like is if you could share this podcast with someone, that would be amazing. Someone that you feel will get value from it and will join the community. So you share it with them and don't forget to click subscribe so that you don't miss any of the episodes. And if you're feeling really generous, a review on whichever system you've downloaded it from, whether it's iTunes or Spotify, a review would be fantastic because that brings me even more listeners. So thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget, midlife isn't a crisis. It's our time to shine. So go out there, do something amazing this week and I'll catch you next time. Bye.